Hello and welcome to this video on reverse percentages. Now what I mean by reverse percentage is that we want to find the value of something before the percentage change. So we've seen in previous videos if we have an initial amount and we've got the percentage change, how do we find the value after that percentage change? But this time we want to find the value before that change. So let's dive in immediately into some questions. We've got a cabbage is reduced in a sale by 20% to a value of £20.80. What was the original value? Now, you might be tempted to think, well, if it reduced by 20%, so it's 20% less, we could find the original amount by just adding 20% back on. The problem is, is that when you add 20% back on, you're finding 20% of the reduced amount, not of the original amount. Now, there's two ways to do this. One way is using decimal multipliers, and I prefer this way. So let's just say you've got your original amount, and let's call it x, we don't know what it is. Now, what would we times it by to reduce it by 20%? Well, everything starts 100%, it reduces by 20% to 80%. And 80% as a decimal is 0 0.8. So we'd multiply by 0 0.8 in order to reduce it by 20%. We've seen that in previous videos. And that gave us a value of 20 pounds and 80 pence. So how would we find the original value? Well, we multiply by 0.8 to get to the new value. So how do we undo that times by 0.8? Well, we just divide by 0.8. So x is going to be that value, new value we had, and we divide it by 0. Undo that effect of timesing by 0.8, and it gives us 26 pounds. So 26 times 0.8 would give that. So the original value was £26. Now the other way you could do this, by the way, is to say, well, if it was reduced to 80%, we know that 80% of the value is equal to £20.80, and then you sort of work your way back up to 100%. We could go via 10%, so we could find out what 10% was. With 80% was £20.80, we're dividing by 8 to get to 10% because it's 8 times smaller, £20.80 divided by 8, and that is £2.60. And therefore, 100% would be 10 times bigger than 10%. So we times that by 10, and we get £26. So we can see we get the same amount in either case. I personally prefer this first method. What about the second question? A cabbage is reduced in a sale by 30%. The discount was £4.80. What was the original price? Now, the difference with this question is that they're telling us what the discount was. They're not telling us what the new value. So the 30% was the £4.80. So if we had the original value x, what would we do to find the discount of 30%? Well, we'd times it by 0.3. And when we find 30%, it gave us £4.80. So we're not timesing by 0.7 this time. I know when you reduce something by 30%, you times by 0.7, but we'd do that if they told us the new value. They've actually told us a discount. The 30% is a discount, so we're finding 30% of the value, not 70%. And then, as before, to undo the times by 0.3, we could do £4.80 divided by 0.3, and that tells us the original value was £16. So if we did 30% of £16, that would be £4.80, which indeed is that discount. And again, we could have done it this alternative way. We could have said, well, the discount of 30% is £4.80, so 30% is £4.80. We then find 10%, which is a third as much, which is £1.60, and then you times by 10 to find 100%, which is £16. We get the same answers here. Now, what about the next one? A didgeridoo is sold at a 40% profit for £84. What was the profit? Now, we can do the usual approach. I'm just going to use the first approach this time. We have the original value. It's sold at a 40% profit. So that means it's increasing by 40%. So it starts 100%, goes up 40%. So it's now 140%. And that as a decimal is 1.4. So we're timesing by 1.4 to increase it by 40%. And that gives us our new value of £84. So that's the value after the 40% profit. So we do the usual thing. 
we just divide by the 1.4 to undo the times by 1.4 and we get 60 pounds. So that was the original value. But we have to check, have we actually answered the question? Did it ask for the original value of the didgeridoo before the 40% profit was added on to get to 84 pounds? No, it actually was asking for what the profit was. So if the value was sold for was 84 pounds and the original value was 60 pounds, the profit was equal to 84 minus the original cost of 60 and that is a 24 pounds profit. Now what about the last one? I revise for 10% extra time each day. On Wednesday, I revise for 242 minutes. How long did I revise for on the Monday just before this? That means that two days have elapsed. So if we said that X was the amount you revised on Monday, well, each day we're revising for 10% extra. So you had 100%, you're revising for 10% extra. So that's 110% we're finding, and that as a decimal is 1.1. But then we're applying that a second time for the second day. And remember, in the video on compound changes, we had the squared if we want to apply that increase twice. And that gives us a new value on Wednesday of 242. So we do just what we did before. We do 242 divided by all of 1.1 squared. So we do 242 divided by 1.1 squared. And that gives us 200 minutes. So let's just check if we had 200 minutes. So if we revise for 200 minutes on Monday, then on Tuesday, we revise for 10% extra times by 1.1. That means we revise on Tuesday for 220 minutes. And then again, we want 10% extra, so we times by 1.1. And that indeed does give us 242 minutes. So just to summarize, if you're using a method of decimal multipliers, when you want to find a value after a percentage increase, or percentage decrease, you multiply by something. But if you want to find the value before the percentage change, then you divide by the decimal multiplier. Forwards, you times. Going backwards, you divide.